In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's celebration. Today we celebrate the feast day, the Assumption Solemnity of our Blessed Virgin, uh, Blessed Mother. Uh, I know this uh, conjures up a lot of images, perhaps, of seeing that beautiful artwork of her being assumed into heaven. But today we try to find out what does that mean for us? that she's assumed in heaven. Before we begin these uh, sacred uh, mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky, it was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away the third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have the salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of Ophir. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, for each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven, a chorus, a, a chorus of angels exalts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, o Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town in Judea, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at that moment, the sound of your greeting reached my ears. The infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And he has looked with favor on his holy servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from the thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned home. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I was saying at the beginning, um, today's feast day might recall in us or remind us of some of these glorious paintings we've seen, either at churches or museums, where you see the Blessed Mother being assumed into the clouds. Um, 
And then you might start having some questions in your mind as you meditate on these images. What does it really mean? Where is her body? I certainly have had those questions, especially when I was studying Mariology in the seminary and asked some of those tough questions. So, Father, are you saying that her body, her soul, all of it just got swept away into heaven and it's just gone? Like, where is it? And of course, I remember a father telling us, there's more there than meets the eye. There's symbolism, and there's a mystery there that speaks to the heart of all of us. Carl Rahner says that the grace that has assumed Mary into heaven on this day speaks to the grace that is available to all of us even us sinners. Now, of course, we know that Mary was assumed into heaven because she was without sin. She is the one that God chose to create Jesus in her womb. But what's important for us to recognize is that, uh, is that it is through Mary's womb that she gives birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God, who gives us the bridge, the opportunity to be full of grace, just like Mary. Now, if that doesn't boggle your mind, well, you're probably not awake or it's just too hot in here because it boggles my mind. So God, are you saying that if I follow your Son, Jesus, if I do His will, If I follow his commandments, if I behave in a certain way that is pleasing to him, that I too will be assumed into heaven, that my soul will rest with him in glory, in the eternal glory forever and ever? And the answer is yes. That's the promise. That's the promise to all of us. And that's the gift that Mary gives us. It is through her life that she offers us salvation. Um, So, you know, maybe some of those questions of, I know I used to have, well, so are you really saying that her body's nowhere to be found, Father? Yes, her body's nowhere to be found. So how did she go? Is she go like like a, you know, like a skyrocket into into the clouds? Is that what's going on here? Well, I think what the church is inviting us to is into a deeper spiritual mystery. A mystery that really can't be captured by any of these wonderful paintings, but a mystery that speaks to the heart of us, that knows that within us, we have the capacity to be saved, to be transformed, to be assumed by goodness, to be taken into heaven, because that is our nature. We are made good, and God does that for us through His Son, Jesus Christ, this day and through Mary. So for that, we say thank you to Mary for giving her life, for saying yes to becoming that bridge that we today can in gratitude be able to say with confidence that through her Son, we too can be assumed and saved. Mary, pray. Let us now gather our needs and the needs of all the people as we pray. For the leaders of nations, may they be guided by the desire to further the well-being of all people. We pray to the Lord. For good and reasonable weather, may the labor which produces our food be successful. We pray to the Lord. For deep abiding of respect of all human life, from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Today we pray in a special way for uh, the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts and for the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We 
we pray to the Lord. No. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you've assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are the glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve and in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures in heaven on earth sing a new song in adoration, and with them and with the host of angels we cry out as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and when he entered willingly into his passion, he, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now together pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb.
Let's take these moments in silence to reflect upon the gift, the graces that we receive through Mary, through Jesus, so that we too may be saved and live in, and live in glory. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you've assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We want to give a special welcome and a shout out to all of our community that is at home. We've modified the sound, so I hope that it's better. It sounds like it is. so. Uh, We've been working on that and let everybody know that we've corrected the sound so they can come to Mass daily. Uh, the Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit be upon you. Amen. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God.